Hey everybody, it's John again, and as you can see, I'm from the recent few videos, I'm trying to get rid of some of the bigger boxed items so I can make some room. Um, but here, I am going to continue looking at these DVD battle sets from G.I. Joe, uh, the 20th anniversary, or 25th anniversary, somewhere around there. Maybe longer? I don't remember, but this is a set 3 of 5. Which is from Arise Serpentor Arise, which was a very odd series. It started off pretty cool. The idea of them stealing DNA from some of the greatest conquerors and strategists and ended with Sergeant Slaughter fighting a big pink blob man, which kind of got out of hand. But uh, you can see it comes with a DVD, four figures, which really only three of them are figures. One of them's a corpse. Um, another mass device piece and various weapons. Build a mass device includes piece number three of five. Originally, I paid nineteen ninety six for this at Walmart. Still haven't found the fifth one for a reasonable price. And on the back of the package, we've got a little blurb about connecting all the pieces to make your. Um, mass device. This, I believe, is the console P. Oh no, this will be the control turret. It will be from this set. And you get a Serpentor, Dusty, a Cobra Bat, and Montezuma's skeleton, because that's a figure that you want to play with. The Rise Serpentor Rise, the DVD miniseries. Dr. Mindbender plans to create a new leader for the Cobra organization using the DNA of the world's most fearsome warriors and rulers of all time. G.I. Joe teams head to the tombs around the world to stop Cobra forces from gathering the genetic material of Julius Caesar, Montezuma, Vlad Tepes, and other long-dead dictators. Will the Mad Doctor succeed? Will Serpentor rise and take over Cobra? Only the G.I. Joe team can stop the nightmare that threatens to unleash the power-mad ruler on the world. And then we got Serpentor. It was a Odd character. He was okay. Like to say this I command way too often and took this franchise into a weird sci-fi-ish kind of monster land. And I think that's around the time that I got out of the G.I. Joes as a kid. But anyway, give me a moment here. I'll open this up and we'll take a closer look at the goodies inside. Coming back to a pile of things here because that was annoying to get them all out. And we're just going to start from this little bit. So we have our control piece. So here is so far our mass device. And um, this faces that way. And we got that. There we go. So there's two more pieces. This piece and the one that I probably never will get. The actual uh, beam emitter. So we'll take this guy and put it to the side here. What else do we got? Got our file cards from the modern era that are done in the old school way. We've got one for Specialist Dusty, which is a pretty cool looking card. We got our Cobra Android Trooper, also known as a BAT, or the Cobra Bat. We've got our card for the Mighty Serpentor. Do we have one for Montezuma? What? Why don't we have one for Montezuma? I thought we had four figures in this thing. But these are pretty cool. I like that they went with the old school look of them being cut out. Nothing on the back. Put them to the side. We've got our little instruction booklet for building the pieces. And like the old school blueprints of the 80s, we have our DVD of Arise Serpentor Arise. It has a hundred minutes. These came out 2008. Pretty good. I got the whole series, so again, I'll pass it on to somebody. 
So let's um, start with Dusty here. I'm going to leave some of these guys in the poses that they're in because their weapons are tied to them. So he has the traditional uh, rifle here that looks like the one that I remember first coming with Ricondo, I think. Um, there we go. So Dusty is like his vintage with his dusty dust hat on. Uh, I'm not sure if it comes off. Can you jerk your helmet off, Dusty? It feels like you should be able to. Oh, you can. Oh, there it is. So we got uh, Ronald, a.k.a. Dusty, who I don't have the vintage figure of. I'm going to have to pick that up. Pretty good fight face sculpt, uh, sculpt on him. His camouflaging for the desert is nice. It's cool that he can take his helmet off. Looks like he probably pull his goggles off too, but no need to risk that. It's got a backpack like the original. And then all the modern articulation with the head and spins. Doesn't really look up or down a whole lot. Hinged and rotating shoulders. He's got a single bend elbow which also has a swivel and he has swivels at his wrists. His gun is tied to his hand where it's probably going to stay. And he also has his little like um, long distance rifle here for with the tripod that does not want to stay connected and is probably going to disappear into the carpet one day and I will never see it again. Which is weird that he's holding both of them in his hands, but you know. He's got the abdominal joint, which gives him some pretty good range of motion. He also has a swivel at the waist that's hard to get to because of that. The legs on these guys are really nice. Go forward, they go back. And you got a double jointed knee. And a swivel at the foot. So you can get some pretty good stances out of these guys. And he does have his stand. You can plug his feet into to help him stand up. And that's a pretty decent Dusty. He turned out pretty good. Let's look at Montezuma here. And no, I threw him on the floor. We've got a pretty decent looking skeleton. He's got a lot of little details on him. He's got a sword in his hand. Pieces of plastic ties hanging off his legs. I see a spinal cord and his armor. Can I pull these old things off? There we go. Don't, he, don't, he doesn't need anything tied. Uh, you can remove his helmet, which that's kind of cool. And it looks like you can take the sword out of his hands. Yep. Probably never get it in there again, though, so I'm not going to. He does have some head articulation. Not really any arms. It does rotate at the waist, though, thanks to, thanks to the way the spine is plugged in. No hip movement, no knees, no feet. There's our Montezuma. Can he stand up? Nope, he's just going to lean there. I don't, that's a weird thing to add in. One of my favorite things growing up as a kid to play with though were the bats. I really liked these guys. I liked the concept of them. He's got a removable pistol. It's easy to lose, but it can fit in his holster. And it fits in there pretty tight, which is good. Um, we've got our red bat face. This used to be a lenticular sticker, but now it's actual components and pieces, which is kind of cool. It's got a silver robotic gears going on. A little maybe battery pack there. Looks very accurate to the originals. Got his backpack full of his tools. You got his laser gun, his blowtorch. His hook is bent from being in the package for so many years. I could probably heat it up. His hook, his claw, and fix it maybe. It does have the hinge there. He has all the same articulation. I like how his holster's pinned onto his belt. And there's all sorts of little pieces that are pinned onto his belt. Um, except for he has the gimmicks where you can 
where he can <clears throat> pull off his arms like the modern one. I don't think he could do both. But you can change out his weapons. Maybe that one wasn't supposed to come off. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it fits on really well. But you do have um, in this pile of stuff the hand if you want to put it on instead of the claw but they didn't give you they didn't give a place to connect the hand I mean, maybe I'll put it on its well no because there's only one peg why does Dusty get two peg holes and the Cobra Bat only gets one on his stand well that's dumb I guess it's gonna sit at his feet for some reason I like the head sculpt a lot and all that techno Techno work into his robotic pieces is really nicely done. It's weird that these are a different gray though than the rest. But the bat's very nice. I like him a lot. So this set so far has been pretty good. The other ones, I don't know, they're a little bit weird looking, but this one's really good. He's got the one foot that doesn't go up. Oh, I'm about to be mauled by my kitty. Now he does come with an extra item that did not happen in the original, but they did do a lot of these in the 90s with this giant rocket launcher. It springs in pretty good. Does it fire? Whoa! It fires alright. It's got some power to it. Just a solid black thing with a pretty big red rocket on it. Uh, I'm switching to night shift, so it's throwing my cat off a little bit. She's trying to stay up like a little kid, doesn't want to miss any of the fun. So she's uh, awfully cuddly. I'm gonna put this in his hand. Does fit on his shoulder, kind of. Mm, leaves him a little bit off balance, but not too bad. Oh no, Montezuma! You need to be up. Then you have whoa, Serpentor. Oh God, you can take his helmet off. Look at that head. <laughs> wow, I wasn't expecting that. Good old chrome domed uh, Serpentor there. That he's uh, he kind of a yep. I do have the original Serpentor with a sparkly cape. I remember when I was a kid, my original one of these, I did break open his head so I can look at his weird bulbous head, which now you can do without having to do it. I think the color scheme on the original is a lot more appealing. The sparkles in that cape are definitely a lot more appealing. There's a little knife and a snake. That's our 80s Serpentor. They did do a pretty good job, though, of trends lading him into the modern figure, except for the colors are just so weird. But he's got his serpents around his neck, his snake tails on his chest. He's got this weird skirt, armor piece, some knee pads, and his boots. Not too bad. He does also come with a snake, like the original, because he would throw them as spears, like this. He would grab the snakes and it's kind of cool though that they did that and he would straighten them all out and toss them at his enemies. I uh, can put his snake spear in his hand. And then this was sitting at the bottom of the uh, stands. So I take it it's an extra weapon for him. This two bladed dagger-esque type thing and his snake on his foot. And let's see if we can plug him in with his one peg because he's a cobra and they don't deserve two I guess but it does fit his leg, his feet are a little wobbly being in that box for so long his a little bit of a cloth cape it's tied on by little tiny pieces of silver so I'm sure that could be a problem down the line He's alright. With a little bit more paint apps, he could have been a lot better, I think. He's really back heavy for some reason. He just wants to lean back and fall down. Probably because of the weight of that <clears throat> weight of his cape. Oh man, what just happened? 
Stand up, Serpentor. No? All well, the other ones are fine. Why are you so goofy? You just got way too much weight on your backside, don't you? You can lean you way forward. There he goes. Now he's standing up. I think Dusty and the Bat are were pretty good upgrades out of this set, but the Serpentor just isn't as cool as the 80s. So I think that color scheme is better. His cool gloves with the fangs on the hands look a little bit better. He's got this weird watch device, probably called his uh, ship back to him that he drove around in. I think his Cobra hood looks overall... Well, the scaling on the modern one's not too bad. I like the inside of this one better. And again, the color is a lot better. I guess the fangs on his helmet make more sense in the modern because they're not covering his eyes so he can actually see. <sighs> this is when things got weird right here. <clears throat> Well, that was a look at battle pack number three to build the G.I. Joe mass device that came out almost 11 years ago now. Holy cow. Um, they are pretty fun little things. The modern figures are pretty good. Still, I think overall the 80s ones are funner to play with because they hold their weapons better. Like, he'll never hold these things once I take them out of his hands. The bat's cool, though. They did a great job on the Battle Android Trooper. He complained about him. I think he's my second one from this... from this line. Um, but that's really all I got to say about these guys. So, if you uh, collected any of these, do you have the mythical fifth one? I'm curious if anybody ever seen it. i never seen it in the stores. I've seen it at conventions every now and then. They want like 150 to $200 for the dang thing. Which I'm never going to pay. I'll never pay that for a $20 toy. Um, <clears throat> anyway. Serpentor took a nap again. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. I just want to say thank you one more time for checking out this video and if you're interested in seeing any more you can click uh, either one of the links that will be over here and if you'd like to subscribe to my channel there will be a button down below where you can do that as well and again thank you